Hi, I'm Isabel Wong with Yahoo Finance, and welcome to the second edition of the Yahoo Finance All Markets Summit Asia. And this year, our theme is New Challenges, New Opportunities. So we are so glad to be bringing in business leaders from around the Asia Pacific region to share with us their visions and views around investing, technology, and business strategies for the way forward. And joining us now is Danny Young, co founder and CEO of Prenet. In May 2022, Prenetics became Hong Kong's first unicorn to list on the NASDAQ. In less than a decade, Prenetics became one of the largest genetic testing companies globally and transformed itself from a DNA kit maker to a major Hong Kong COVID-19 test provider. But as the world gradually moves on from the pandemic, what kind of role will Prenetics play in the near future? Now, in this conversation, Danny will be speaking with us about the future of health. Thank you for joining us for this conversation. Great to have you, Danny. Thank you, Isabel, for having me today. Now, first things first, in order to kick off the conversation, I know that Prenetics established itself as the leading COVID test provider during the pandemic. But as the world looks to a post-COVID future, I'm just wondering what kind of role do you think Prenetics will play in the coming years? Sure. I mean, just to give everyone some background wise, right? You know, so Prenetics, we started back in 2014 as a DNA testing laboratory. And then when COVID hit, there was a lot of uncertainty. But I think we, the reason why we're able to excel uh, because we already had the proper infrastructure, we already had the team, the laboratory in place that allowed us to quickly scale and to being able to provide a lot of the COVID testing, not just in Hong Kong, but in the UK, in which we provided COVID testing for the likes of the Premier League, Carnival, Disney. Disney. And here in Hong Kong, we're the, one of the leading providers to the Hong Kong government for testing. So at the height of our, our business-wise, we're actually doing more than 40,000 PCR tests on a daily basis. So a lot of times, the, the key question a lot of people, including yourself, ask me is what's next for Prenetics-wise, right? Um, so I think earlier this year, as you mentioned, on May 18th, we we're the first unicorn to list on the NASDAQ. And with that, that gives us a lot of flexibility and opportunity. So there's two things that we need to do. We need to continue to launch new products into the pipeline, uh, into the market-wise. So in the past few months, we've already been very busy in terms of executing our plan. Uh, about two to three months ago, we launched Coloclear, which is a non-invasive DNA test for the early detection of colorectal cancer by just looking at your stool. So the other alternative to this is colonoscopy. But of course, no one wants to go do a colonoscopy in the hospital. Right? And so we feel this has a lot of opportunity, not just for Hong Kong, but throughout Southeast Asia. The other aspect um, that we've the other new test that we launched a few months ago is called Circle Snapshot, which is at home blood tests. Individuals can easily do a painless blood test at home, send it back to a laboratory, and get results within one to two days. Okay? That's the that's one piece about continuing to launch new products. The other aspect is you know due to our IPO, we now have more than. US 200 million cash in the bank. And so we have a really strong balance sheet, which allows us to continue to make investments in R&D. At the same time, identify M&A targets, which add a lot of value to our business. Yeah? And then so we are looking actively for acquisition targets in the area of telehealth, diagnostics, as well as even virtual and physical clinics. Ultimately, our aim and goal post-COVID is to build the world's first end-to-end -end health ecosystem comprising of virtual care, personalization, diagnostics, um, and actually uh, physical care as well. And as you mentioned, you know, one of the major milestones for Prenetics this year was back in May when you listed on the NASDAQ as the first unicorn from Hong Kong. But we also know that the U.S. has the most expensive healthcare system of any country. Do you have any plans, you know, in terms of expanding your footprint um, in the U.S.? Because one of your missions is to bring health closer to people with affordable solutions. Yeah, so definitely wise, right? We're actually looking globally for, as mentioned, in terms of MA targets, and US is definitely one of the priority areas that we're looking closely at. Uh, and again, I think over the next two, three months, as these you know, discussions come to fruition, wise, we'll be able to announce these to the public markets. 
Right. And um, now as the world looks to move on from the global pandemic and we gradually put the COVID challenge behind us, right? What are some of the major challenges that you anticipate um, in the in the near term? Um, you know, and how are you going to equip yourself and your team to tackle those new challenges? Yeah, so I think one of the key challenges is, okay, how fast do we move away from COVID, right? I think, you know, here in parts of Asia, there's still a lot of testing that are, are being uh, taken place. And then, so the other aspect challenge is, okay, how do we adopt a very, I mean, the other key challenge is how do we implement new technologies into the marketplace? I think the key challenges moving forward post-COVID wise is basically how do we educate individuals that health is so important. And then one of the great things about COVID that actually has accelerated the demand for at-home testing. And then so as our mission wise is to make healthcare much more accessible, this places an emphasis on hey, how do we decentralize healthcare and putting health in people's homes without going to the clinics or hospitals. So this really is about education, making sure that people understand how to do the tests, how to get the results, how to interpret the results as well. Right. And next up, I would like to talk a little bit more about the future of the healthcare industry, because as you mentioned earlier, that you aim to create an end-to-end -end health ecosystem. But help us understand that vision. What does an end-to-end -end health ecosystem built by Prenetics look like? Yeah, so I think first thing we have to look at is the current healthcare system is very centralized. Yeah, so typically if you are sick, um, you actually would have to go to hospital clinic. And a lot of times the testing and services are utilizing many dirt parties, right? It's very fragmented. So when we think about an end-to-end -end health ecosystem, we're thinking if the next time you're sick, if depending on where you are in the world, you can actually see a virtual doctor. Uh, in the comfort of your home. If you need any type of testing, we will also deliver that testing to your home. You or if you need a blood test, you will send a, a blood test kit to your home. You send it back to a laboratory, you get your results. If you also need to see a physical doctor, we will also arrange uh, a, a physical doctor that's close to you. If you need medicine or deliveries, we will also arrange that for you. So it becomes very seamless and makes sense. And also that cost savings will be quite significant for both the individual as well as the healthcare system. Um, you mentioned a little bit about that. Obviously, during COVID-19, the adoption for telehealth solutions has definitely risen quite a bit um, with social distancing um, restrictions. So could you also tell us further about what kind of new innovations that we could also expect to see um, in the telehealth front um, in the near future? Yeah, so I think as everyone has seen, I think, you know, you know, roughly when we look at the data wise, right, you know, roughly 50 to 60% of all doctor consultations can be done remotely. And this actually saves a lot of time for patients, as well as the practitioners, right. But I think moving on top of that is about how do we actually decentralize uh, testing? Uh, in, in terms of healthcare wise, right? And then, so that's going to be also one of the key innovations that we're already providing. As, as mentioned earlier, we just recently launched a non-invasive stool DNA test for the early detection of colorectal cancer with 96% sensitivity. Now, everyone that I've talked to has said basically yeah, if they can do this in the comfort of their home, they do not actually need to do a, colon a colonoscopy at the hospital. So this becomes a great innovation and a tool for people that would have otherwise not opted for a colorectal ca cancer test. I mean, uh, otherwise opted for a colonoscopy test. Uh, the other aspect, again, is how do we make testing much more accessible? So this is where we launched Circle Snapshot earlier. Again, a lot of people that I talked to, they may not have even had time to get a blood check or look at their cholesterol reading within the last one to two years. But if I can send a test kit to your home and it takes two minutes for you to do, it makes it much easier for people to do the test. And we make prevention a part of healthcare moving forward. Because right now, any challenge of healthcare is too reactive. Once you have condition, then you want to find the best doctor. But a lot of solutions in healthcare are now moving uh, for the spectrum and making proactive prevention a key part of healthcare.
And with any innovation, obviously there are pros and cons. Um, the pros being convenience and the cons could be um, a little bit on the privacy side. And um, as expressed in recent years, some, um, you know, the, the public would have concerns around um, whenever they are trying to do online DNA testing, as well as some of these like telehealth solutions that are emerging, they might have concerns around their privacy. So how do you work to ensure the privacy of your customers? Yeah, so privacy has always been something that we take prop, top priority. So for us, wise, if you do a, a, a DNA test with us or any of our testing, we do not share with any third party, uh, and we do not share with any government. Uh, in, in, in entities, um, any healthcare entities, any pharmaceutical companies. So that's always very important. You can decide who you share that data with. Right. And the other aspect, obviously, is um, sustainability. Sustainability and ESG continue to take center stage um, in post-COVID conversations. And a lot of the sectors that are under the spotlight would be EVs, renewable energy, and meat substitutes. But What's your view on the role that the healthcare industry could play in driving that sustainable future for the rest of the world? Yeah, so I think healthcare plays a significant opportunity for sustainability, right? So as mentioned, if you think about it, a lot of the care that you, when you go see a doctor or a hospital or a clinic, 50, 60% of that can be done remotely. So what that means from a sustainability perspective is that thinking about all the time, the carbon emissions that you actually don't have to drive out to go to a clinic hospital, there's a lot of additional paperwork that's also saved. Um, so by default, healthcare plays a big role in terms of ESG and sustainability just by default. Right. And um, now as technology continues to disrupt the healthcare industry, how do you envision the dynamics um, of the healthcare industry will look like in the years to come? Do you see the coexistence between like new emerging players as well as traditional players or, or how will the ecosystem look like? Um, 100%. I think you'll see much more collaboration, uh, even between public and the private sector. Yeah, because I think previously, pre-COVID wise, I think you know, governments around the world, they're, they're less receptive to working with private uh, co corporations, right? But I think via COVID wise, you see now there's a big argument to it's actually the best outcome when you have public and private sector working together. And I think nowadays also a lot of private companies realize that, you know what, we can't do everything together. So when we can outsource certain things or when we can collaborate, it's a win-win opportunity for everyone involved. Yeah, and finally looking ahead, not just a few years ahead, but decades from now, what kind of new opportunities do you see in Hong Kong and the rest of the world? And what are some of the key markets and areas that you're looking to innovate with Prenetics? Yeah, so I think key thing moving forward, why, again, kind of I touched upon it earlier, why is it's really about having data and prevention and health in front of your hands, right? So what we, what I believe, let's say in the next 10 to 20 years is that as the cost of genetic testing goes down from now, let's say you know, hundreds of dollars of USD, imagine that cost for a DNA testing in the next 10 to 20 years could be anywhere between 20 and 30 USD. So by the time that you are born, you're born with a wealth of information that will identify in terms of, okay, let's say what's the drug, what's the best drug for you? What's the best diet? What's the best nutrition? What diseases? you may be more susceptible to be. And once you have all of that wealth of information, this is where you can model your lifestyle accordingly and to, to prevent certain diseases or, or cancers from even forming before it happens. Wow. Well, we will look forward to that as will the rest of the world. Danny, thank you for speaking with us. That was Danny Yang, co-founder and CEO of Prenetics. For more content from Yahoo Finance or Market Summit Asia, please check out hk.finance.yahoo.com.